Hey guys, this is Mark Goldberg from Mark Vlogs Watches with another exciting episode for you today. Thank you so much for joining me. Before we proceed with the quick fist watch check, I would just like to remind you to go ahead and smash that like button. It really does me a world of good. And if you haven't subscribed, do it now so we can do this again together. Now the quick fist watch check is a tradition on this channel. You just sit there, relax, and let me handle everything. And here we go. And today, guys, I am wearing a uh, Seiko Tuna. This is actually the newest of the Seiko Tunas. It is called the Bluna because it's blue, sort of, but you rarely see the blue. Almost always looks black. Okay, guys, let's jump into the meat and potatoes of this kettle of fish right now. And what we are here to talk about, of course, is not Seiko. We're here to talk about Rolex. And I just want to give you a quick tip. And that tip might be a little bit different than what you think. Because what I'm going to tell you is, do not call the AD. Do not pick up the phone. Do not call the AD. Go to the AD. Visit the AD. Walk into the AD. Browse the AD. Now, if you're a watch collector, you know if you're going to go look at Rolex that there's probably not a whole lot in the case. This is the situation, the condition that we're in right now. And you know that ahead of time. So my advice is, do not go when everybody else goes. So what am I talking about? I would not show up on Saturday at 12 noon when the store is likely to be crowded. Let's actually jump back a step though quickly and let me talk briefly about why you should not pick up the phone, bring, bring, hello, do you have a James Cameron? Hello, do you have a 43 millimeter sea dweller? Hello, do you have a Starbucks? Don't do that. Almost every time I've been in an AD, the phone has been ringing with questions like that and I hear somebody on the other end of the line saying, no, sir, I'm sorry, we don't. No, I, I don't know when we're going to get one in. You can come in and, and talk, but we don't have that right now. And no, we don't do waiting lists over the phone, but you know we're, we're happy to show you whatever we have if, if you visit us. And then when they hang up, they roll their eyes. Um, and I'm not talking about any specific AD. This is virtually every AD I've ever been in, in multiple countries, by the way. Um, you know, uh, back when I could get on a cruise ship, Easily, um, you know, I loved visiting ADs in um, Bermuda and in the Cayman Islands and in other places where, you know, these ships would stop. God, I want to go on a cruise again, guys. I don't know about you. If you've never done it, amazing. But I digress, as usual. The problem with the AD is, is that it's so easy for people to pick up the phone and from wherever they are in the country be calling around. So when, when you call the AD, they don't even know where you're from. And um, naturally, an AD would prefer to sell to somebody local because the, the probability is, if they do so, that that becomes your jewelry store. And uh, remember, these guys are not selling only Rolex. They're selling earrings and diamonds and rings and Mother's Day gifts and Valentine's Day gifts. And you, you should be, you should, you should expect to, to make yourself a, a client of the AD if you would like to be treated with, um, I think, importance. By, by the majority of ADs out there. And really, again, not talking about any specific one, but this is the reality that we live in today. I have spoken to a couple of ADs who told me that they get 50 phone calls per day, 50 a day, asking for the same half dozen watches. You have a Milgauss, you have a Datejust, you have a GMT, I, I mean, whatever it is. And oh, and another mistake that we make, that we collectors make when we go, uh, when we get on the phone, and we ask for these specific watches is, we ask for them by their watch collector nicknames, okay? So we ask for the Sermit or the Starbucks for that green bezeled sub. Um, we ask for a Batman or a Batgirl, depending upon your inclination, when we're looking for that uh, uh, blue bottom GMT on the Jubilee bracelet. We ask for um, a James Cameron when we're calling about the deep sea blue. That's actually kind of an official nickname, that one, but you know what I'm talking about. We asked for the, uh, the SD43 when we're talking about the 43 millimeter sea dweller because this is how we call them. This is the, the language of us, okay? But I assure you the language of the AD is very different. For example, um, you were probably, back when the Hulk was easily uh, available, Believe it or not, there was a time when you could walk into a, an AD and buy a Hulk right off the shelf because nobody wanted them. On the secondary market, they sold for less, less than retail. But back in those days, you could walk in and say Hulk, and they knew what you meant, 
and it's not like they would uh, fail to sell it to you if they had it in that era. But let's just say the ADs would call the Hulk the Green Submariner. That's what they referred it to, to it, or, or the LV, which was the Lunette Verde designation on the reference number, because that's how Rolex calls it. When you call the AD using watch collector language, you immediately identify yourself as either they're concerned that you're either a flipper or that you're a one and done come in, cherry pick off like the best thing we have in the entire case and then leave and we're never going to see you again. So that's why I would not pick up the phone. And not only that, but understand something. If they're answering the phone 50 times a day with the same set of questions, how annoying does that get? I mean, that is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of phone calls in the course of a month. And it's irritating, and, and I can see it on the face of AD employees. I have seen that look, oy, you know, all over the world. So I advise you not to pick up the phone unless, okay, I think it's different if you have formed a relationship with, the, with that particular AD and you've got a salesperson that you deal with on the regular. I think it's a different story than when you call. Joe, how are things? How you been? How's the wife? How's the kids? How's the insurance policy? And by the way, do you have a panda laying around there? Well, he's going to laugh, but at least your call will go through. I think something else that you could consider too would be, um, you know, asking that individual if you can text them every once in a while just to check in and see how things are going, especially if you're on the wait list. But I think the idea of picking up the phone with any regularity and, you know, and uh, touching base with the AD is more of a molestation, you know, than anything else. You, you're sucking up valuable floor time. They could be out there doing their thing. And um, so I, I would just avoid it. Again, honestly, no AD ever told me to tell you this, but I bet you there's a bunch of ADs out there going, uh-huh, he's right. By the way, if you are one of them, put, put your thoughts on this in the comments. Um, on the other hand, if you called an AD, and you were able to buy something due to that phone call, please let me know. Because every once in a while, someone hits jackpot on all the stuff that I, that I say, don't do. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and I think that you need to speak up so that you can be the counterpoint to this. Um, what do I think you should do instead is to go into your most local AD or ADs. And I think you should pick oddball times to go, you know. And uh, if you want to call them, I think rather than calling and saying, do you have... I might just call and go, hey, when's a slow time? Because I want to come in and browse watches, but I don't want to come at a time when you guys are going to be busy because I, I don't want to I don't want to take you off the floor for my nonsense. And I think that kind of phone call might be much more appreciated. It might make you stand out a whole lot more. So this is my thinking, guys. It's really unfortunate right now because the supply of Rolex is so dim that um, there's just a lot of people getting crazy out there trying to secure one. And what that means is these phone calls are worse now probably for them than they have ever really been. I can assure you this. If anybody at the AD says, sure, give me your information. We're putting you on the wait list for whatever it is. You know, what they are politely telling you is, I'm going to add you to my mailing list because the boss says we got to start collecting email addresses, <laughs> you know. And um, now you will find yourself receiving, uh, you know, the Valentine's Day promotions and stuff, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Honestly, I, uh, I think the life of an AD, let's say the life of a good AD, an AD who is not selling out the back door, an AD who is not selling above MSRP, an AD who is not taking bribes. It's a tough business these days for those guys, but they exist. I know they do. I know some of them. I do business with, with, with an AD exactly like that. There are a lot of good guys out there. But those poor guys are answering the phone constantly, and uh, what, what can I say? I think you are just far better off to, um, to just walk on in there and try and form a relationship. This is my best piece of advice to you. Fellas, I'm gonna wrap up with this little bit of news. Um, I have heard from a couple of ADs around the country that Rolex has instructed them to pull any watches that they might have out of the safe and to put them in the case and to keep inventory on hand that comes in, even though it is probably already promised to a customer, to, but to keep it on hand for a while until more comes in. Um, why? Because the cases are empty. And uh, the Rolex reps who are local, you know, in any given territory, in any given country, have been instructed by their bosses in Geneva at the factory to talk to the ADs in order to get the cases looking a little bit better. And uh, there's lots of rumors about demonstration models, which is to say watches that have the case and the bracelet but no movement in them being plonked into the cases also, the reps are supplying some of the ADs with this. Um, it's like, uh, 
I don't know, it reminds me of one of those uh, cowboy movies where, you know, they go into a ghost town, but when the camera goes behind the scenes, it's, you know, it's just like cardboard, you know, it's just there for effect. And uh, that's what Rolex seems to be doing right now. So you may go in and start to see a little bit more um, supposed inventory in the case, but I think it's kind of like a false front, if you will. That's how bad things are right now. Um, so I do think that the, the factory is trying to make it look less empty. I think that this is putting yet even a little bit more pressure on the AD. So your phone calls are probably appreciated even a little less right now than they ever could have possibly been. But uh, then again, the AD is in the business to sell. They want to sell whatever it happens to be. So look, guys, I don't know, whatever the next holiday that's coming up, you know, we're in the middle of summer right now, so there's not a ton. But uh, hey, if you ever thought of buying your wife a... Um, you know, a Labor Day gift. Well, at least Christmas is coming up. Surely you have an anniversary soon, and then after that is coming um, Valentine's Day. If you have picked out an AD that you would like to buy a Rolex from, my best piece of advice is go in and shop for that kind of stuff. Let them know about your interest in a Rolex, but form a relationship, and if you can buy a few shiny objects and doodads, gosh, I think you're helping your situation a whole lot more than if you just constantly call these guys. Do you have a green sub? Do you have a Rolex? Do you have... I would leave them alone or go in form relationships the good old-fashioned way in person and with donuts tell me guys what do you think i'll be reading the comments and talking to you there thank you so much for spending this time with me don't forget to subscribe so we can do this again together and soon goldberg peace out